I am free, I am unlimited, there are no chains that bind me, I am free, I am unlimited, right now, right now, I am free, I am unlimited, there are no chains. That bind me. I am free. I am unlimited right now. Right now. Thank you, Jody. That was beautiful. Free and unlimited. What a gift that is. We are celebrating Memorial Day here today, and we thank you for joining us at A Place of Faith. We have a wonderful service for you today. As you've already enjoyed, we have Jody on music, and we have Pastor Robert from the Unity Church reading our Just for Today. Becky R is going to do our meditation, and we have a great message today from Judy G. My name is Linda B., and I am grateful to be here with you. Please join me in prayer. Higher power, we are thankful, and we do remember all of the people who are not here with us, who did not make it through. God, we know the people who have died to give us our freedoms, to teach us our lessons, and to let us be who and what we are today, who and what we will be through you and of you. We are so grateful, and so it is. Amen. Just for today, risking vulnerability. As we grow, we learn to overcome the tendency to run and hide from ourselves and our feelings. Rather than risk vulnerability, many of us have developed habits that keep others at a safe distance. These patterns of emotional isolation can give us the feeling we are hopelessly locked behind our masks. We used to take risks with our lives, and now we take risks with our feelings. Through sharing with other addicts, we learn that we are not unique. We do not make ourselves unduly vulnerable simply by, putting, by letting others know who we are, for we are in good company. And by working the 12 steps of NA, we grow and change. We no longer want to need to hide our our emerging selves. We 
are offered the opportunity to shed the emotional camouflage we develop to survive our active addic addiction. By opening ourselves to others, we risk becoming vulnerable, but the risk is well worth the rewards. With the help of our sponsor and other recovering addicts, we learn how to express our feelings honestly and openly. In turn, we become nourished and encouraged by the unconditional love of our companions. As we practice spiritual principles, we find strength and freedom both in, our, in ourselves and in those around us. We are free to be ourselves and to enjoy the company of our fellow addicts. Just for today, I will openly and honestly share with, other, with another recovering addict. I will risk becoming vulnerable and celebrate myself and my friendship with other NA members. I will grow. Please join me in our meditation. Breathe in and breathe out. Begin to relax in the knowing that God is all. We are here with you, connected to you in this moment. Relax and feel the presence of the divine in you, around you, Release everything that does not belong. As you listen in the silence, As you begin to return slowly, letting go of all that does not belong, you come back to the understanding that your higher power is there with you. The love of God surrounds you, always. Amen. Today's talk will bring together the song Jody sang about I am free, I am unlimited. It'll talk about being vulnerable. It'll talk about the love that your higher power has for each of us. The pr name of my talk today is Being Present or Putting the Brakes On. As we go back a little, we remember that we came to recovery. We came to these rooms. We came to treatment. We came to different ways of getting into recovery, either because something inside of us said, your life is a mess because of everything going around you, or your family and friends did an inter intervention on you and said, you need help. We lost everything. We've lost jobs. We've lost family. We've lost 
friendships. We've lost ourselves. We have, again, our life is in absolute chaos. So coming into recovery, we started going to 12-step meetings. We found new friends. We got involved with a sponsor who was there to give us direction. And one of the key things about helping us get out of ourselves was getting in to service work. If we stayed busy, this helped us stay away from our addictions. It gave us some foundation work. It gave us, a, it gave us the ability to be useful, to help others, where before, when we were in our addictions, it was all about where's my next drink, where's my next drug, where can I go to gamble, what foods did I want to eat, what shopping did I want to do. All of that was centered on us. Now we were being taught to serve. So we start in our 12-step recovery, in all of our recoveries, that we're building a new life. We have a job. We keep the job. And that's a first for a lot of us. Because maybe we had good intentions, but always our drugs gave us away, and we would lose it. We start building friendships. We start hanging out with people who don't use drugs and alcohol. They find that you can have fun without being high or loaded or drunk. You're also, at this time, being taught that there is something outside of you that is a higher power. You're learning to turn your life over to something outside of you. And sometimes, in the beginning, that is your 12-step meetings or your sponsor or the group itself. And your life goes on this way for years and years, and you're doing well. But all of a sudden, you find out something's missing. You're busy. You may have three kids, a spouse. You're busy in your community. You're busy in your church. You're busy in your service work. All of a sudden, you start getting resentful because you're so good at service work and being there for everyone that everybody wants a piece of you. Everybody knows that you are the go-to person. You want this done, and I'm speaking for myself, go ask Judy to do it. They trusted me. They had faith that I would do it. You develop a time where there's no time to smell the roses. You're either dealing in the past or you're so far in the future, you have you're exhausted, and you're resentful, and you're angry. Even though you have all of these good things going for you in your life with regard to family, relationships, a job, the service work, getting to a place of where you're angry and on overload is very, very slippery ground. It's very, very slippery because you have no time for you. So it's time to beef up your connection to a higher power. You've done the steps, but maybe it's time to go back and revisit steps 11 and 12 and take it into a deeper place for yourself. A deeper place, learning to listen, learning to meditate deeper. What is it saying? You know, one of the things that I got to learn through this is putting myself first. What does that mean? That's foreign to me. It was very foreign because I was always there for everyone. 
But you know, I was no longer using the destructive addictions to go through life. But if you're like I am, we were busy, 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 busy. But now it was time to take time for ourselves. But you know, in, in staying busy, we got to hide from what we felt, what we needed. And maybe this sounds foreign to you, but being that busy, and you've been in recovery for a lot of years, being busy can be very, very addictive. It can become your addiction because you hide from you or we hide from ourselves. We hide not only from ourselves, but we hide from each other. I had somebody tell me in a group meeting one time that we were asked to pass a word to each other that we wanted to see in the other person. And the word I got handed was by a very dear male friend of mine, and the word was authenticity. So I looked good on the outside. I spoke well. I spoke what you wanted to hear. But that wasn't me. So this busyness and everything being involved was an addiction. Who are you? Who am I? During this COVID-19 pandemic, this social distancing, my higher power has had a wonderful time with me. And it, there's an old saying that when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And it was about putting on the brakes, learning to live in the present. So what does that mean? You know, part of the song that Jody sang about the freedom, I am unlimited. When someone is so busy, being busy, they are limiting themselves. Because you're controlling your life. There may be times you are listening, but you're so much in the past, or we're so much in the future, that we have no idea what God is trying to say to us. But as you start to learn to live in the present, be very gentle. This is a process too, just as each one of the steps is a process to growth. So getting into a deeper connection with your high, higher power takes a lot of courage. And that's the spiritual principle I'm introducing here, courage. The courage to step back from what you understood or allowing yourself to go deeper. Maybe it has served you well, but now it's time to look at it in a different way. Trusting your higher power to be your guide Learning to listen in the quiet. Just think. Just, excuse me, just be. Don't think. What in the world does that mean? Years ago when I was in treatment, there was a chaplain that was part of the treatment program. And she said that to me. Don't think, just be. Some 35 years later, I'm starting to figure it out. And what it is, it is the most freeing, awesome way to live. It is about getting outside of your mind and just allowing yourself to be, allowing that small, that small, it's large, quiet inner voice to come through you, to guide you. It may be intuition. It may be a thought coming out of the middle of nowhere. It is that kind of guidance that will take your day and run your day and be there for you. It doesn't mean you have to give up everything in your life. What it means if you have put someone else 
in control of that life. It means that when you get up in the morning, you don't need to hit the ground running and look at your to-do list. It means we get to take time for us. And if that is meditating, saying a prayer, stretching, going for a walk, getting yourself ready to take on the world that day, you will find, at least I can speak for myself, that I have found that when I do that and allow God to work through me, all the things that need to get done that day, all the people that need to be called, all the kids that need to be groomed, all the animals that need to go to the vet, the husband that needs attention, all of that happens with ease and grace. It happens almost magically because I got out of the way. But it's, it's taking that time to learn that. And along the way, we get to find out that all these people or situations that demand our attention, we get to say no at times. We get to say, thank you for asking me, for considering me, but that is not for me at this time. That's very new for a lot of us. Very, very new. But it's very important because you have other things in your life that need attention, like yourself. Perhaps that relationship, even though you're married, maybe it's not as good as it could be because you're too busy. Maybe the children aren't getting enough of the time that they need. Where are the stories you read to them or the games you play with them? But you're off doing a volunteer project because someone asked you. Maybe it's time to say no, and that's okay. It's okay to not fulfill everybody's needs. And that brings up another thing that has happened for me over the years. Needs being met. I remember long ago, and it's gone on for a long, long time, someone told me I was very low maintenance. In other words, I didn't rock the boat. Whatever you find with me, go do it, mm, whatever. But what happened along the way, and maybe some things weren't real important to me that whatever that person wanted or the situation was, that was fine. But along that way, didn't speak up of what I needed, didn't talk about my feelings, fear of hurting people, fear of more fears than you can imagine. And during this time, during this pandemic, speaking up is becoming a new thing. Is it scary? Yes. Will people like me? Will people think I'm hard to get along with? I've had to realize that that is part of their story, not mine. As long as I'm saying and expressing my needs with love and consideration of others, then I'm doing my job. I have learned along the way that my higher power has been with their all my life, just didn't know it, just didn't connect with it, just didn't know that there's magic in life, and there's magic in learning to stay in the present, to live one day at a time, sometimes it's one hour, and staying in the present is one moment at a time. Each moment is precious. And if the tools I've shared with you today take you deeper into your connection to your higher power, that your life is a life worth living, that you are serving, you are here for yourself, you're for those around you, 
but you're also here to make sure that you have balance in your life and that it is okay to say no. That your plate doesn't need to be so full that you have lost the joy of living. Do not allow slippery places to come into your life from request, from needs of others, without knowing what you need to do for yourself. God is with you and always will be. And in closing, I have a saying that I got from a beautiful book but called What About Now? with a big question mark. And it's by Gina Lake, and it's about living in the present. The joy is being present, is in noticing the light reflecting on the silverware, the specks of dust floating in the sunlight the contentment on your pet's face, the way the folds of the curtain fall, the shadows cast by the rocks, the clouds changing shapes, the taste of butter on bread. There is infinite variety available in this moment to enjoy. If you notice, but you have to be willing to notice the small things, the details, because they are often what sets the present moment apart from other moments. My prayer, my wish for you, go out and enjoy this day one moment at a time. Once more knocking on a locked door Wondering why I try for anything at all Ran hard, worked it with my whole heart, reaching for that last part. Once again I fall. I've never had an easy climb. Still it's up to me to decide. I will carry through that closed door won't sit still not anymore this is my time which way am I headed today I don't care what they say the decision is mine I may not have I will carry on I will
will carry on. Hope is never gone. Hope is never wrong. It's time to take the leap beyond what I can see. Here I go again. Thank you, Jody. That was amazing. I told you we had a great service today. Thank you, Judy, for that wonderful lesson. My takeaway on that was absolutely don't be so busy doing that you forget to stop and be. What an important message and a beautiful gift to carry with us through the week. We invite you to stay connected with us at A Place of Faith. You can find us on our Facebook page. A Place of Faith on Facebook. We have a daily meditation and prayer posted there as well as the services like the one that you're watching now. You can also reach us via email at a place of faith at zohomail.com. That's Z O H O mail.com. We very much want to hear what you have to say to us. If you're facing challenges, if you have recommendations, we're here for you, and you matter to us very much. If we can work together with you and your organization, contact A Place of Faith at the email address I just gave you, a place of faith at zoho.com. We are experts in social distancing and adhering to all of the rules and regulations for keeping you and yours safe. We can come into your uh, treatment facility if you would like us to and honor all safety regulations and bring a message into you and yours. We appreciate your gifts and donations that keep us going and thriving. You can send checks to A Place of Faith at Unity Church of El Cajon, 311 Highland Avenue, El Cajon 92020. Just make those checks out to Unity Church of El Cajon. They're our sponsor. And in the memo pad, put A Place of Faith, and they'll make sure that goes to us. Or you can donate via the Unity Church of El Cajon website, or call the office here with your credit card information. Just make sure in the memo to put a place of faith, and we will be very grateful for any help you can give. If you would join me now in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. <laughs>